Welcome back to the NC Tech, the latest ACCA SBL pre scene analysis. So, if you have already subscribed our package, you can download the application notes from your study platform, approximately 104 pages uh, for the analysis with application to the syllabus. If you haven't enrolled in our uh, official package, of course, you can still download the sample application notes. So, uh, in order that you can use that along with this video. Now, let's continue our story with regards to part two, the cloud service industry information there. So, firstly, we have an overview of the industry. It really provides storage facilities, okay, storing data for the client. So, for example, if I've got video files, okay, I would like to purchase the cloud service for, for example from uh, YouTube or Vimo so I can store my videos from there alternatively for Google for example I can store uh, upload my documents uh, onto that platform and, and of course quite a lot a lot of companies in real life so for example it's the Amazon and Oracle uh, uh, and also IBM will provide the similar services for that now uh, what do I mean by cloud is where You've got a company, so for example, uh, the company in the pre scene, so for example, it owns a platform and uh, allowing access by a lot of their client. So clients can store the data onto this platform, but storing the data not necessarily on the platform itself, but in its computers. Okay. Now, of course, the computers will be used to serve the client. So these computers uh, bought by the company would be, uh, by the case company would be the server, for example. As I said, the user organizations will be, of course, clients and they have competitive pricing. I will see that later on. And also, this, uh, the cloud services industry in this country has been more than a decade. So, um, so whether or not it's a mature market, I will see the statistic later on there. And of course, the users can be the SMEs or small and medium-sized entities and individual professionals. So what if that you're focusing on larger organisations, so for example, the uh, government organisation and so on. Now, I've done the summary for you. So firstly, the primary offerings for these companies in the clouding service industry will be to provide data storage facilities, so for example, the servers and so on. So sell it to you or allowing you to use that, okay, on a pay-as-you-go basis, for example. And the price will be quite competitive as well. And the market established and the key segment or the key users will be the SMEs and individuals. Now, Let's apply the knowledge combining with practical real-world examples. Now, firstly, there would be different pricing actions okay, in the cloud service industry companies. So, for example, they may be introducing very dynamic pricing strategies. So, what do I mean by dynamic? Would be there will be plan A, plan B, and plan C tailored to uh, different companies. So, for example, if uh, the company is quite small, yes, the company can enroll in a plan A, but if a company is larger, okay, it's the company uh, can be recommended to enroll in the plan B and something like that. And, of course, the cost will be different there, okay? So that's what I mean by dynamic. Um, alternatively, for larger businesses, they may have customised pricing plans. And we will see in a second, if I were to implement these sort of schemes in practice so what sort of things do we need to do okay so we will see how we apply that later in our course of course you can also think about to introducing the competitive pricing strategies in order to win the market share so as i said in the previous video in this industry traffic which means the number of clients will be very key to this industry uh, to companies in in this industry so very very important you can always think about gaining market share 
So for example, if I were to use our revenue and to divide this into the total revenue in the, in the industry, and that would be the market share. And making sure gaining market share to reach the economies of scale uh, condition would be uh, very, very important there. And yes, you can see a lot of companies examples I provided to you. For example, the Google Cloud Platform. Okay, it's the very competitive pricing uh, to be offered, okay, to, to, to clients. And, and of course, if you are based in China, for example, a company called Baidu, okay, so also having the competitive pricing scheme as well. Okay, so uh, the customized pricing plan, so for example, from Microsoft, Azure, okay, very flexible pricing options to uh, different companies, so tailor-made, in other words. Amazon, okay, so having very dynamic pricing strategies. So make sure you're ready. Now, here in Farland, it seems that the market is quite mature. So what NC Tech company can think of would be to focus on other developing market. Now, a very famous example here would be the IBM Cloud. Okay, so they are thinking about to expand their businesses relating to the storage facilities and so on in other countries. So, for example, in countries in Southeast Asia or Africa and something like that. Yes, uh, the company can have lots of schemes to operate in those countries. So, for example, via the joint venture. For example, working with local uh, computer manufacturers and uh, so if you buy the computer you will also buy the bundled service okay provided for example by IBM Cloud so this will be one way that you can do alternatively you can perform the M&A or mergers and acquisitions to acquire the local companies directly alternatively in a mature market, you can always think about to innovate yourself and to diversify your businesses. So, but when I think about the diversification option, that will be very, very, I mean, very, very complicated and, and very, very risky because diversifying the services, which means you're going to be introducing the new service, alternatively, targeting, for example, the new market, which means new people. So, for example, um, providing a particularly uh, tailored solution to, to the uh, non-for-profit making organisations or the government, for example. So, uh, it will certainly have a lot of financial implications. So, for example, in terms of the credit period and the receivable stays and, and something like that. So, you always need to balance the cost and benefit of each of our scheme there. Now, and of course, for the innovation, yes, you can build the AI function in there. I think that's quite obvious. And if I'm the examiner, I'm not the examiner for the SBL, but I'm the ACC marker for other papers. But if I'm the examiner for the SBL, I would certainly set a potential exam question based on the scenario that we are integrating with the AI function and we need to make certain investments in that. And therefore, I will be giving you, for example, the management accounting information related to the uh, investments in the infrastructures and working capitals and so on. And ask can use also to analyse the variances from the budgeted and actual results and so on. So combining with the uh, management accounting stuff, okay, in the investment appraisal question and giving you another uh, requirement in part B, asking you whether or not this strategy is okay okay uh, evaluating that strategy okay so for example using the SFA test and something like that okay so I will be very much interested in that particular area because the scenario seems to be quite obvious to many students nowadays but yes because we've got the AI based applications all around the world and we can use that and, and of course so does the uh, NC Tech company now, in a mature market, the NC Tech can also think about the potential acquisitions or building strategic partnerships 
okay, with other companies to, to build up the market share, in other words, because always remember in this industry is the economics of scale is very, very important, okay, in this industry. Now, therefore, in order to win more clients, you will need to make your pricing strategies and marketing strategies right. Okay, so uh, yes, an exam question may potentially, so for example, related to the marketing part in our syllabus, is we've talked about the seven P's when we are segmenting our market and also thinking about to uh, incorporating the IT issues in the downstream supply chain and downstream supply chain, okay, so which means we're going to sell the item uh, to the wholesaler or retailer or the final customer. Now, how we manage those, I will see that later on in our application because I've developed a particular mode for you later on in the course. Right, now, let's move on. We have got the key cloud service statistics for the current year, okay, it's 20x2, related to global and in our own country called Farland. Now, firstly, we are given, okay, so I will directly copy the information in my notes, okay, I'll analyze the stuff here. So, firstly, as you can see, the percentage of client data stored in the cloud, as you can see, globally, more than 50% of the data is now currently stored in the cloud. So this means that it would be a very strong trend that the market or people around the world will be accepting the cloud service. So this means that this industry is quite good. Now, in the exam, for example, you may be given a few options, okay, for the uh, NC Tech that our profitability, the financial part is not looking particularly good. And the option one, will be to continue to penetrate the market or to develop the new market, that's the option two. Option three, perhaps to leave this industry. Now, if I were to comment on, so for example, whether or not I should leave this industry, of course, I would need to look at the figure. So for example, according to a pre seen for example, or you don't really have to say according to a pre seen but you can say that the percentage of a client data stored in the cloud Globally, 52% is a strong trend that this industry will be very, very good there. So why not stay in this industry? However, in Farland, only 38% in there. So if that's the case, it seems that the trend in Farland is not particularly obvious as the trends in the global okay, uh, market. So perhaps there will be a lot of reasons behind that. Perhaps in Farland, we have stricter laws and regulations to regulate the use of our clients' information, especially for their personal wants. And this is why it is not very popular in Farland compared to that in the global market. So it seems that it may be a wise option later on for MC Tech, not just to focus on the Farland's market, but also to expand into the global market. But Watch out, of course, as I said in the previous recording, if you want to expand your business in less developed countries, you will always think about quite a lot of risks in there. I will recap on that later on when we come to the subsequent uh, recordings. Now, number two then. You can also see that total annual revenue generated by all cloud services providers globally, $155 billion, it's a huge number from my perspective. However, in Farland, only approximately less than 10% of the global market, only $8.3 billion there. So what it really tells me is that I would say that in terms of the US dollar, $155 billion would be a huge market here. Now, if that's the case then, I would say that this industry globally will be now acting as a key player. So always think about the, uh, the action from the government to support this industry will be absolutely key there. So for example, you can think about that at some point in the future or currently, yes, we contribute to the global economy quite a lot and enabling lots of business transformation 
uh, because I can help different SMEs to use the cloud-based service to cut the labor costs, uh, to work from home and to store data in a safer way. Yes, I can help them to change the way that they do business and helping innovation and technology development because by the use of AI, uh, consolidating a market in particular, okay, you can hand over all of your jobs from manual work. Uh, so for example, how to manage the inventory, how to uh, manage the customer relationship, and even how you audit the companies. So you can having all these data to be stored in my company and later I can introduce the AI function and to help you through that and you can't leave my business any longer. Okay, so it seems that the global market is relying on the cloud service providers, including those SMEs, the related sectors, for example, the IT consulting. And yes, I can reach a lot of companies and individuals all around the world and making sure that we are flexible okay so even though it is through the COVID although the ACCA specifically said that the COVID-19 stuff will not be considered in 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 the pre scene and the actual exam and this will be absolutely fine there but uh, in the actual exam there might be a question that there might be another virus okay coming in and causing lockdown and a lot of other issues impacting the economy quite a lot similar to COVID-19 and yes our company will help to improve flexibilities the ways that we can do business there so if that's the case that I would say is that think about we are the key player and whether or not I can get support from government Okay, from all around the world, if I were to build my infrastructure in that particular country and to serve the client in these countries, for example. Now, the role of government would be very, very important there because, as you can say, a lot of IT companies, particularly in China, for example, uh, if a company is controlled by the foreign uh, company or investor, uh, related to the IT industry, for example, that company cannot be listed onto the stock exchange in China. But yes, you can uh, seek uh, a public status, for example, uh, in other countries. So, for example, you can think about a lot of companies such as the Alibaba, okay, so it's the Chinese company, but not listed in China, but listed in the US. And this means that, yes, I can think about, yes, the support from government, but also the role of the government and the potential political risk will be particularly high there. Okay, so because the $155 billion would be, I would say, huge. Okay, so always bear that in mind there. Now the final figure or statistic given by the examiner will be a top 10 services companies share of market so as you can say, globally, 74% of the revenue would be within that top 10 cloud service companies. So what does that mean? So it means that the market is quite concentrated to these 10 service companies. And of course, in Farland, even higher, to be 85% of the revenue will be concentrated to the, to the top 10 cloud service companies based in Farland. So to me, it seems that, yes, you can say quite obvious that the market is quite competitive. It's not from the new entrant or the new competitor, but it is from the existing competitors. Now, what does that mean? It seems to me that when I analyse the competitive environment, it seems to be the, uh, the uh, oligopoly market, okay, so uh, NC Tech is operating in, so oligopoly market. Because the market is dominated by a few large 
competitors. So if that's the case, though, uh, the best option, the best strategy in terms of pricing, operating it on the copy market, is not to lower down your selling price. So otherwise, because you're maybe providing very similar service to other competitors, and uh, because the ways that you store the data from the client's point of view, yes, I think it will be the same if I were to choose the company one or company two. So it really depends on uh, whether or not they will charge a lower price and, uh, and something like that. But if, I say, if you decided to lower down your selling price and your services will be very similar from one company to another, you are going to trouble. Trust me, you will absolutely go into trouble. Because in the oligopoly market, think about the Coca-Cola and Pepsi, McDonald's and KFC and, and something like that. Okay, so they compete with each other, but they're not going to lower down their prices. Otherwise, uh, both companies will be forced to lower down their prices eventually. So from my perspective, though, though the best way is to operate in, in, in this market, so firstly, is to make your services look in a different way. So, which means, yes, differentiation will be absolutely important there in this industry. Yes, you can argue that we should keep our costs down, okay, so for example, cost leader strategies, but from my perspective, though, yes, keeping costs down will be absolutely key. However, we can't simply keep our costs down, okay, because the market quite competitive indeed. Uh, at the same time, it will need lots of capital to be invest it at the very start. So instead of simply getting a lot of traffic and um, to lowering your selling prices because you, you lower down your costs, the more viable option from my perspective from, from the business point of view would be to having the differentiation strategy, okay, so to differentiate the service that you provide. Alternatively, to differentiate the ways that you deliver the service, for example, attaching, attaching additional service that you provide to your client that nobody else in, in, in this market provides to your client, for example. Alternatively, you can also think about to use a niche market strategy. Using a niche market strategy, as I said before, yes, you can identify a particular niche or particular segment of your client, so for example, in the public sector and something like that. But again, using, combining with differentiation strategy in that niche market will be a more viable option from my perspective. So don't get me wrong. So I'm not saying I'm using differentiation strategy and I don't care about any cost at all. Because our aim in our previous recording, as I said before, to reach the economies of scale, okay, position will be absolutely key in this industry though. So you can read the narrative I provided to you, okay, just I talked you through that. Now, making a final conclusion for these statistics there. So firstly, the global market shows higher cloud adoption. Yes, you can think about to expand into other market, but you can all, always need to bear that in mind that there will be differences in the cultural and the legal side. So make sure they are ready for that. And the trend, okay, so it seems to be ongoing trend in this industry. Um, from the strategic implications point of view, expanding market share in our country, okay, in Finland, to compete with top players, don't put the price war as your first option, but to innovate your service and building in extra features will be very key there to survive. Now, moving on then. We're also given in the pre-scene there will be different cloud service models. For example, the infrastructure as a service, we're short for IAAS. Platform as a service, PAAS. And three, software as a service, S. A, A, S. Okay, right. So we've got these three models, but what do I mean by these three models? 
from the ACCS point of view, we don't really have to be uh, an expert in this industry. So what I want you to know is to understand the basic idea, and, and that's all you can do. Now, infrastructure as a service means you use my infrastructure, you use my server, and to be installed in your own computer. So this is installed on your PC or personal computer. However, the second type will be to use my uh, software and something like that, okay, so store your data, but via my platform. At the same time, yes, because that's what I mean by platform, but at the same time, it will provide you with very basic service. So, for example, if you've got any technical uh, queries or problems, uh, there will not be a dedicated okay, uh, personnel to be responsible to deal with the issues faced by this particular kind, but you can submit a ticket from my platform and I will, I will uh, solve that issue as quickly as possible. The third type of model, software as a service, meaning that you can get access via my cloud platform, okay, similar to what we've seen in, 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 in a second one, but at the same time providing you with a lot of services, especially the dedicated service. At the same time, I will help you to develop the apps. Okay, So uh, you can use the app or, or I, so a, a, a lot of these companies, so for example, the website building companies, so for example, Wix.com, yes, they have an option. Uh, so if you enroll in that service, at the same time, you can uh, ask them to build the app for you. Okay, so very, at a very cheap price and so on. So I've summarized these for you. Okay, so for example, the cloud service model, so for example, the IAAS, so again, using servers and networks. Uh, and also facilities related to data storage, uh, but uh, on their own operating system, on, on their own computer. The PAAS, on the other hand, is that get access to the software on the provider's operating system, which means you can log into my platform and to uh, use that. Okay. Alternative is the software as a service, okay, handles all the service components, no need for clients to have the specialist IT hardware and software, and so you can use my software as well as the hardware completely, and are providing you with the dedicated uh, service support. Now, also summarizing these, okay, according to the pre scene, for example, such as this. So, for example, for the first type, it doesn't have communication software, you can't get access to any services at all, you cannot. Uh, log into uh, my system, but you can only install it onto your own computer. And also other applications or apps are not available, okay, in the first two. So make sure that we are ready for that there. Now, let's see the application then. So uh, what it means by these three options. Firstly, it's the IAAS. Yes, you can think about the Amazon, the web services or AWS. Okay, now, um, and also the Microsoft Azure, okay, offers virtual machines for a lot of computing solutions. You don't really have to remember, okay, these names, but um, what I want you to know is to consider the risk. Both from the NC Tech or the provider's perspective and also the customer's point of view. Now, using the first option there, the major risk would be that from the NC Tech company's point of view, we have to make sure that the infrastructure will be maintained properly because uh, you will install the software onto your system and to get access to the cloud services uh, facilities that on my site. And I have to make these absolutely right there. Okay? So otherwise, from a buyer's point of view, because the software 
if it is hacked by somebody else, okay, for example, you've got a Trojan host installed in my software, but you download it and they install it on your site, and of course, it will uh, be a damage to your, to your system. Or, or, or alternatively, if uh, the system is hacked, okay, uh, so for example, you've installed the software on your PC, but uh, that software was hacked by somebody else, and, and of course, the NC Tech company would be suffering from this in the end. So this would be the major risk, the cyber security threat, and we need to manage all this part properly from the NC Tech point of view. However, if you're getting access to, to my platform, no need to store your uh, computer. So it's very, very difficult then for your hackers to hack my software. So for example, for Google, uh, as an example. Now, from the NC Tech's point of view, the soft risks here will be related to the system uptime. Okay, so making sure that the major risk that we need to keep the system okay so you can get access to it, 724, okay, without any downtime at all. But it is highly unlikely that this will be the case. There will always be downtime in this industry. And from a customer's point of view, as you can say, you may be really depending on my platform rather than using your own platform. You, can, you, you, you will need to store all this data, so for example, into, uh, including your Excel formally uh, in the right format on my platform. So you will really depending on, uh, uh, on, on my end. So for example, you can think about the Microsoft, and I know uh, a lot of students, for, for example, from other countries, they may be using a different service provider, so for example, the WPS. And of course, the files uh, type between these two companies' requirements will be absolutely different there. So um, if you're using a Microsoft, and uh, if you want to transfer the file to another company, so for example, using the service from another company called WPS, uh, there, there, will lot, there will be a lot of chaos in, in, inside, okay, in, 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 in terms of the character, in, in, in terms of uh, uh, how it looks and, and so on. Now, dependency, from a bias point of view, that would be a risk and, uh, and, and that would be a key consideration if you're asking the buyer to use, for example, the platform as a service option. The service as a service option, as I can say, so for example, the Microsoft Office 365 would be an example for that. And, and of course, from the NC Tech's point of view, the service quality will be very key there in order to keep uh, our clients. And, and of course, all those issues related to uptime and cybersecurity risk, we always need to consider that as well, because these are included in software as a service model there. From a buyer's point of view, on the other hand, okay, so uh, they will have to think about the service reliability and the customization integration limit uh, with the existing system, with the existing files will be absolutely important there. So these will be the risk that they will be considering, okay, so when they are advised to upgrade to an other model and something like that. I hope you're happy with the part two uh, of our recording and, and, and happy studying and looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.